Mr. Speaker, this is a great way to start 2016. It's a great way to start 2016. There's a, there's a new sheriff in town, Mr. Speaker, as, as you know, who has a commitment to regular order, and the process we have today is regular order at its finest. We're here today on a reconciliation provision, Mr. Speaker, that came from the United States Senate. Mr. Speaker, it came from the United States Senate because it was first passed by the United States House. Mr. Speaker, it was passed by the United States House because for the first time in over a decade, we had a conference budget agreement coming to balance to govern these United States of America. Mr. Speaker, five years I've been in this institution, five years I've served on the Budget Committee, five years I've served on the Rules Committee. Never before has this House considered a reconciliation measure that with passage today will go to the President's desk tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, I don't care where you are on the policy. This is an issue of repealing the President's health care bill and the damaging impacts it has had on my constituents across the district. I doubt seriously there's a member in this body who has not made up his or her mind on where they are on this issue. I will try to persuade no one on the merits today. But what I will do, Mr. Speaker, is tell you that when you get the process right, you have an opportunity to get the policy right too. Mr. Speaker, this bill eliminates the penalty for noncompliance with the individual mandate, that individual mandate that changed the nature of the relationship between the governed and the governing. Mr. Speaker, this bill would eliminate the penalty for noncompliance with the employer mandate. It would eliminate the controversial reinsurance program. It would repeal the IRS's ability to provide insurance premium tax credits and cost-sharing subsidies. It would repeal the costly Medicare expansion. It would increase our investment in community health centers. Mr. Speaker, all told, this bill would save the American people $500 billion. I'm not so naive as to believe that this bill is going to be the end of the story today, Mr. Speaker. But I celebrate the fact that with the passage of this rule, we will have an opportunity to vote and an opportunity to act in ways that we have not year upon year upon year. Mr. Speaker, I do not believe our mandate in this House is to agree. I think that our mandate in this House is to decide. And we cannot decide with a process that is broken. We must have a process that is open as this process has been. Mr. Speaker, the President raised the American consciousness as it relates to the discussion of health care in this country. He persuaded the American people that pre-existing conditions have no place in the American uh, body politic. I believe he was right on that. I don't believe that will ever change. He persuaded the American people, Mr. Speaker, that insurance policy shouldn't have lifetime caps, that when you're facing your deepest and your, and your worst fears in your family, when those have, have come true, that you ought not to get bad news from your insurance company on that same day. I agree with him on that. I don't think we'll ever change that. But, Mr. Speaker, there are folks in my district who had policies that they counted on that were canceled. There are businesses in my district who had a commitment to take care of their employees. They've now been priced out of the market. Mr. Speaker, there are folks who wanted to exercise their choice and not the President's choice. If you go to the most recent Rasmussen polls, the American people prioritize lowering costs over universal coverage. Mr. Speaker, I'm committed to providing health care to those who cannot afford it, but I am committed to lowering costs for those who can. The free market is the mechanism we will use to lower costs, Mr. Speaker, and with this repeal today, we have an opportunity to begin that discussion in earnest for the first time in five years. With that, I reserve the balance of my time.